Hey guys, how's it going, Dudio? I am back with another video. Today, I am looking into the Gabby Petito case. Now, this is a very, well, ongoing case, and the suspected killer, who we will dive into in just a moment, is on the run, and there are plenty of conspiracies around that person's location. Before I begin, Guys, we are quickly coming up to 100,000 subscribers. That has been a dream achievement of mine for nine years. If you could help make my dream achievement come true, I would be eternally grateful. So hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and share the content. Maybe even hit the notification bell. That would be amazing. Okay, so Gabby Petito and Brian Loudry. Engaged to be married. Gabby, 22 years of age. Brian, 23. They decided to quit their jobs and travel across the country, going from one side to the other and stopping camping at the most beautiful and idyllic locations along the the way. Gabby Petito decided that she wanted to document it all on her YouTube channel, TikTok page, and Instagram. And from the outside looking in, when they began in July, it looked like the absolute dream scenario to do with your loved one. But unfortunately, tragically, it would end with the death of Gabby Petito and Brian Loudry missing. Now, this case has swept the entire world by storm. And as I said, as of recording, this is still under investigation. Gabby Petito murdered a coroner just recently coming to the conclusion that it was manual strangulation or throttling, meaning that Gabby was choked to death with bare hands. But as I was saying, Gabby and Brian packed up into a van and began driving across country, documenting their way, showing off the beauty of America. Initially, it seemed like perfection. However, towards the end, the cracks started to show until it all came crashing to a deadly finale. The first signs that things weren't all as they seem come from a phone call to police. Now, I have mixed reports here as to whether this phone call led to police pulling them over or whether slightly erratic driving and clipping a curb led to them being pulled over. Footage I will show you in a moment, but before we get to that footage of the police cam, like I said, a young gentleman witnessed Brian being incredibly violent to Gabby and called the sheriff's department ASAP to try and get Gabby help and get her away from Brian. Grant County Sheriff's Office. Were you able to get a description of the Hi, can you hear me, sir? Yeah, I can hear you. Hi, uh, I'm calling. I'm right on the corner of Main Street by Moonflower and... We're driving by, and I'd like to report a domestic dispute in Florida with a white van, Florida license plate, white land, gentleman, Where's about it five, six beard. They just drove off. They're going down Main Street. Or what were they doing? Cooperative, but um, what did you say? What were they doing? Uh, we drove by, and the gentleman was slapping the girl. He was slapping her? Yes, and then we stopped. They ran up and down the sidewalk. He proceeded to hit her, hopped in the car, and they drove off. Okay, you said um, it's a white van? White van, I give you the I give you the license plate if you give me one sec. I took okay. a picture of it. What kind of white van? Like a big one? Um it, it was a smaller van. White Ford Transit. White Ford Transit. All right, I will let somebody know. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Bye. Thanks. Now, I have to admit, that audio does frustrate me because the operator does seem to be rather condescending towards the caller. I don't know. It just, to me, seemed a bit off. So whether he let someone know, like he said that he was going to, or if it just fell under the radar, regardless, police did intercept the van. Now, once they were pulled over, you can clearly see from the offset that Gabby is incredibly distressed and upset, and Brian seems to be incredibly on 
edge. Take a look at this footage. What's your guys' names? Gabby. I'm Brian. Gabby, Brian, okay. What's going on? How come you're crying? I'm just crying. We've just been fighting this morning. Some personal issues. I was distracting him from driving. I'm sorry. Can I get you to step out of the vehicle for me, man? Yeah. You want to tell me what's going on? Yeah, I don't know. It's just some days I have really bad OCD. And okay. I just, I was just cleaning and straightening up the back of the van before, and I was apologizing to him and saying, I'm sorry that I'm so mean because sometimes I have OCD and sometimes I just get really frustrated. I'm not like mean towards him. I just like, I guess my vibe is like, I. I am really like in a bad mood. I've just been really stressed. I had so much work I was doing on my computer this morning. What do you do for a living? Um, well, I, I hate to get an organic juice bar, but I just quit my job. Okay. I was a nutritionist. That's oh, what, okay. That was my That's job. Cool. And I just um, quit my job to travel across the country. And I'm trying to start a blog. And okay. Have a blog. So, so I've been building my website. So I've just been really stressed. And, he doesn't really like, believe that I could do any of it, so that's kind of been like a, I don't know, he's like in, down there, I don't know, we'd have been fighting all morning, and and he would have let me in the car before. And then Why I, wouldn't he let you in the car? Because you have OCD? He told me I needed to calm down. He really stresses me out, and I just, and this is a rough morning. Tell me, what's going on? It, the shoes gets worked up sometimes, and I try and really distance myself from her, so like I, I lock the car and I walk away from her. What, what happened this morning is that she's trying to start up like her own little website blog and everything, so... You, you want to tell me about those scratches on your face? She had a cell phone in her hand, that's why I was pushing her away, because I... She, she wanted the, I locked the keys so I could walk away, I, I said, let's just take a breather, and let's not, you know, go anywhere, let's just calm down for a minute, because she's getting a little worked up. I know I shouldn't push her, but I was just trying to push her away to go, let's, let's just take a minute, step back and breathe. See if she got me with her phone. Can I see your hand? Oh, you got a mark right here. Oh, that's from a wire. You want to tell me about hitting that curb? Hitting the curb was her grabbing the wheel. Yeah. She said, I can't believe we're getting pulled over, and then she grabbed the wheel. What about the speed? Did she take over the, did she no, take over the pedal on you? I was going fast, I'm sorry. No, it was probably just the, the moment of like, I'm still shaking now. The adrenaline, seeing the lights flashing up, and then her grabbing the wheel. I am separating between you tonight. Okay? I want you guys both to be tonight away from each other, relax from what you told me and what he told me. You guys have a bunch of little things that are building up, building up, building up, and finally the little string that you guys were tight walking on the road tonight. Does that sound about right? Now I believe this footage was from August the 12th, and they were split for a day to take a breather, and then after that they continued their journey together, and they began posting again, and to be honest, you know, a lot of the footage, it seemed like they were back to their normal, happy, idyllic, dream life selves. Her parents would receive the last message that they would ever receive from Gabby, and it seemed a little bit odd. She was asking for her grandfather, but asking by his first name, which implies something was wrong. Perhaps it wasn't even Gabby at all sending the message. Maybe it was Brian and he just made a Freudian slip by using the grandfather's name as opposed to, you know, granddad or pops or whatever she would refer to her grandfather as. Now on the 27th of August, a couple called Matt and Nina reported seeing Gabby and Brian. Now obviously this was reported after the fact she was a missing person hit the news. Matt and Nina realised when they were at a restaurant on the 27th of August there was a couple there. Now the gentleman of the couple, who we now know was Brian, was being incredibly rude and rather aggressive towards the restaurant staff. Now apparently Gabby looked like, to quote Nina, that she was at breaking point and Brian was just erratic and absolutely going off to a point where Matt and Nina obviously took note of the couple as well as Nina saying to Matt that she was to be honest, quite disturbed by Ryan's behaviour. That same day, fellow YouTubers that go by the name of Red, White and Buffoon, a family camping channel from what I can gauge, were travelling through the Grand Teton National Park. Now, as they were driving through and they had their GoPro running, they went past a white van. And the reason they took note of the white van was because they had Florida plates. And these YouTubers were like, ah, oh, they're from 
Florida. Let's go and say hello, because we're from Florida. That's cool. We're all the way out here, and we're from the same place. So they were going to say hello, but the van was all, you know, empty and blacked out, and they thought, ah, the people are going for a hike, whoever this van belongs to. So they didn't think anything else of it, and off they went on their travels. Now, obviously, when it hit the news that Gabby was missing, they thought, oh, wait, was that the van that we went past? So they looked through their footage and lo and behold, it was a direct match to that van. So they called the police and the police went and searched that area. And unfortunately, Gabby's deceased body was discovered. So the van was seen on the 27th of August. Fast forward to the 1st of September, just a few days after the van was spotted where Gabby's body would later be discovered. Brian returned home after being away for two months with Gabby. He returned home alone. So this of course raised so many questions and later after that of course Gabby was reported missing. But as I've already explained, due to the outcry on the news, etc., and the help of, you know, Matt and Nina recognizing them in the restaurant and the YouTubers recognizing their van, leading to the discovery of her body, it wasn't an investigation that lasted too long to discover Gabby's body. However, the number one suspect, Brian, has gone missing. Now, his parents claim that Brian went out for a hike in a wildlife reserve, the Carlton Wildlife Reserve, which is apparently a swamp filled with alligators, deep waters, a very treacherous terrain, so much so that police that are still searching for Brian are actually having to slow down their search because of how treacherous and dangerous that reserve is. Now... Why did Brian go for a hike knowing that his girlfriend was missing? It, it, the behavior is very odd. The Laudry parents are acting very odd. They are refusing to help with the investigation into Gabby. All they are focused on, which, I mean, you could say like, okay, I guess their son is missing, so that's all they're focused on. But the fact that they are apparently being rather evasive towards helping or giving any kind of detail which could help towards you know what happened to gabby they're they're not interested they are purely focused on brian which is of course incredibly incredibly suspicious as i said a coroner has come back and concluded that gabby was murdered she was killed by manual strangulation, which means that it had to be someone using their bare hands, and Brian is nowhere to be found. Now, a warrant has been put out for Brian, not to do with the murder of Gabby, but the fraudulent use of her debit card a few days seemingly after she was killed. So they're looking for him to arrest him for fraudulent use of a, of a debit card, but everyone is placing the blame on Brian. There are many conspiracies out there as to what has happened. The most obvious, of course, would be that Gabby was in an abusive relationship and it just went too far and Brian killed Gabby. The question you have to ask is if Brian is innocent, which personally I don't believe he is, he drove back from the location where Gabby's body was found to his parents' house. There is a theory out there which is pretty wild, but I'm going to show you the footage now, that Brian is being hidden in a bunker in the back garden of his parents' house, situated underneath the flower bed. Now, it seems that the parents are passing something through the flower bed and you can see something move in the flower bed. It's a bit grainy, but people are deducing that that could be a hand. And once the parents see the drone, they do quickly get away from that area. Now, I know it seems ridiculous, perhaps, but there are many bunkers in the back gardens of Florida where a hatch is installed underneath planters, flower beds, and the floor of the garden shed. So it is entirely plausible that there could be a bunker housing Brian in the back garden 
of his parents' house. It's all allegedly, of course, but this is a theory that is currently, as of today, running rampant throughout the internet. What do you guys think? What do you think happened? Do you think he is in a bunker? I would love to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it. I will speak with you very soon. If you want to support me, all the links are down below. Please hit that subscribe button, smash that like button, hit the notification bell as well. Sweet one. Geese.